to have a panel on pillow packs and titanium. And as you can see, that that's a slow thing for a bit. The best thing about having a panel is having some other people on. So uh, we have a variety of people from across our industry, uh, mostly involved from people on the So we got some different uh, jobs together, we had a lot of different ideas today, and that's what we do. Um, Guy introduced, uh, well, you know who you are, Phil, if you want to start Phil, Andrew, Colin, and Julian, I'd like to introduce yourself. I'm Phil Whelan, a <coughs> software architect of ActiveState. Uh, I'm Andrew Clay Schaefer, and I am Waters Lackey. <laughs> I'm, I'm, his, I'm his bannerman in the Game of Thrones. Uh, I'm... <laughs> I'm Colin Humphreys, CEO of Cloud Credo. I'm also what is his lackey. <laughs> um, I am Julian Friedman. I work for IBM. I'm not what is his lackey. I am my manager, Alex Tarpinian's lackey. So we have uh, someone representing one of the original distributions of, of Cloud Foundry here. We have one of the guys that created Puppet. We have someone who actually created the tool that allows us to, uh, to, to do build packs locally, turn them into Docker images. What's it called? <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> Never cloud mind. Rocker. Nice. Yeah. Oh, we... Rocker. <laughs> <laughs> it still, and, it still uh, begins to uh, F on the weekend. And Julian used to work on Watson and is now on the, now on the garden team. He's still on the garden team. I'm still on the garden team. I'm proud. Garden fruit. Um, so a container is what Garden runs um, in Cloud Foundry. Um, I think actually this is a really difficult question, right? Um, the obvious answer is a container packages um, a unit of deployment so that it can be run anywhere. There's, there's two things that are going on that people conflate. So there's the, the packaging of the root file systems and maybe three things. So there's the root file systems, there's some metadata about that file system and entry points and maybe some other stuff. And then there's the actual process isolation, uh, the kernel features. And, what, and there's some arguments about which PID gets to start. Uh, I think there will the maybe a little on top. A pro I mean, a container is a process, and then the rest of it is kind of up for grabs. So, the, so in the parlance that LXC started with, a Linux container is a process that runs under uh, C groups and namespaces. It's, it's a process that gets to pretend like it's alone well, on the computer. A, let's, let's a lonely that. process. So yeah. if you think about LXD, right? LXD, um, I would say I'm asking it to start a container, right? But it's actually going to use what's effectively a VM to do it, right? That's still a container, right? As far as I'm concerned, as a user, it's a container, except they're now using a completely different technology to actually deploy it. But that's still... So what's, what's the different technology? Well, it's actually basically a VM, right? But the, LXC is? Good. or uh, LXD. Oh, yeah, right. yeah but I'm, we're not talking about those guys, right? <laughs> I, I just opened that kind of worms. Oh. Right? That's how we so, start. So I think that there's actually, I don't know how quickly we want to get veer off of this, but there's a future, <laughs> a future where all the things that people are excited about with regards to packaging and isolation uh, are actually even more true about the unikernels than you're getting with the... Uh, with the um, process containment, OS level right. virtualization that you see right now that everyone's excited about. So if it follows the, the arc that the, 
colonel, you know, being, being mainline colonel to now, in about six, seven years, everyone's going to be really excited about unit kernels. So that, that's why I'm pushing on these two things being slightly different, right? Because I, I actually think the technology is, uh, and I work on the technology, but the technology is slightly irrelevant, right? So you've got, we kind of need two words, right? We've got containers, like a unit of deployment that I can deploy with various technologies. Absolutely. Um, and then we've got, unfortunately, Linux containers, which is an unfortunately overlapping word. There's names, a namespace name collision. In, groups, right. in, the, in the Docker yeah. world, they have Docker images and Docker containers. And very dis the container is the running thing, and the image is the portable thing. But obviously, that's got skewed, and everyone, says, everyone right. gets excited about Docker containers right. being portable. Which is because they've used this ship analogy. Right? The, 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 the analogy mm. of a container, that word container, is the container on a ship that means I can put it on my ship and take over the Atlantic in a you know, reasonable way. But I think one thing that's missing, for, or at least it's unspoken, is that this adoption curve and the exuberance around this technology is only possible because everyone's already running the Linux kernel. It's not like you're actually adopting new technology. These are features that are in the kernels that you're maybe already running, and you're just able to have more accessibility to those features. Although I've heard people, for example, using Solaris to implement containers, right? They use the Docker API, Solaris on the back. You can run the Joyant. images. Joyant, yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and, and that, there's nothing, obviously, that makes that not a container, right? There's nothing that says that's not a container. Well, this, this, is, why the, this is why the definitions are, like, people are conflating the two things. There's the packaging of the deployment artifact, and then there's the process isolation. Right. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this panel uh, title is about build packs and containers. Um, so they're kind of two things. There's one where I think when we think about the containers, it's currently it's the, like, the Docker image where you, you build the whole thing and you put it in there. And then the second one is, is build packs where you've, you've basically got a, a base container and you use the build pack to take the code and build it from there. But I think um, the spectrum could be a lot wider. Um, you could... I mean, on the end of the spectrum, there's obviously the raw code. Um, but after that, you could have compiled code that you put in, uh, and then maybe a build pack or something that runs that. And then after that, you've got the build pack, which can install it, and then you've got the Docker image. But um, I think with other technologies like Kubernetes and, and, and Google, they're taking it a little bit further. Google said that they rarely run a single container, and that's why they have pods. And so Kubernetes has these concepts of a pod. So when you deploy a container, you don't deploy a container, you deploy a pod. And an application possibly would even make up several pods. Um, so actually limiting ourselves to just talking about should it be code or should it be pill packs probably doesn't take it far enough. Um, you know, should we be supporting deploying multiple pods to Cloud Foundry? I think we should have uh, a high degree of high degree of freedom. To be honest, I think there's it's quite. So the, the original, well, the current Cloud Foundry model, you have your code, you give your code to the PaaS. It stages that for you by combining the build pack with your code. That will output a droplet, and then staging is done. The droplet is then put down onto a, a single layered mm. file system and then run inside of a container, and those containers can be scaled. So we're giving our code as the unit of currency, and Cloud Foundry takes care of everything else. And, and then in that, when you say container, you mean the process isolation of the kernel, not the file system, right? When you said the way you're using the word, right? A Linux container. Yeah, yeah. 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 Sure. So th there's a bunch of things in there. I think everyone's got the right idea about aspects of it. And then the thing that you're making your decisions on is kind of a localized perspective of, do I really want to get this into production? Do I want the maximum flexibility? Or 
am I thinking about day two, day three, how do I patch ghost, how do I patch heart bleed, right? So if you have a bunch of things that you don't know what they are, you have no way to inventory what they are, then at the point where there's an uh, a vulnerability, you have to audit your full infrastructure and figure out what to do. So there's, there's a value to being able to separate all these different layers from the operating system to the, the stacks that you're going to provide for the runtime to whatever your little code bits are. And having that separation gives you the power with something like Cloud Foundry to do a patch across your full infrastructure. Basically, as soon as you have it and the, the rolling updates across everything will, will so work. So, so I actually don't think anything's missing so much as it would be nice in Cloud Foundry. I personally, this is what I, my vision, and then you guys can uh, uh, say what you think is wrong about it. But I really want to be able to deploy the container as, a, as a, a thing that I can move as an artifact. Like, it's nice to have the build pack for these operational considerations and the, and the auditing and, and control from an operational perspective. But I would really like to be able to eject, right? You can't eject a droplet. You can technically if you dig it out, but it's not built into the API. But to, I think to the, make the API, that, that's just, I think, been an oversight. I mean, um, we very soon will have the ability to move droplets out of Cloud Foundry. So sure. I think, as I just said, the droplet is something that when your, your code is combined with a build pack, a droplet is created. And that is theoretically portable between different Cloud Foundries, certainly inside a single Cloud Foundry between different... Uh, spaces. So you'd want to take that droplet and move it from dev right. to stage to QA to prod and not restage your code. Exactly. Each time. There's, there's, no, there's no... Sorry? So you, you don't want to restage your code each time because if you've tested that droplet and you know that it is good, you don't want to rerun a staging procedure that might fail to go and grab dependencies from the internet or might fail in some other way, or might have something that's temporarily dependent in, in rebuilding a new droplet for production. So your staging one worked, and your production one then fails. It's, it's just a Docker layer, right? Like, we happen to implement it by shipping a tarball of a directory, but it doesn't matter. It could as easily be a Docker layer. It doesn't, I think that is... It doesn't... It, it, obviously, it's it, it, is, it is just an implementation detail, but it's an important sure one, because layered file systems in Docker don't work amazingly well. Right. Uh, Layered file systems, of, period. Well, yeah, exactly. Well, that's, don't that's, work that's the point. amazingly I'd well. Rather see, I'd, rather see a one, a sing, I'd rather see the current setup where we have a, uh, uh, a file system image that is used, and then we untar a droplet because it, it is reliable, it is good, and it's clear exactly what's going on. You don't have 50 layers that may or may not have permissions issues across uh, them. Uh, yeah, I, I, we actually, only need I two layers. layers really. I, think, I think you could use like layering to do that step. Maybe three. Just fine. It'll be so technically fun. better. It's the, like the, the, the point is, it doesn't matter. The, te the technology isn't the important thing. The important thing is what's the abstraction the user sees. And Dr. Nick was asking the question, what's missing? I actually think the actual answer right now is not enough is missing. Containers give way too much power. Right? Actually, it's great to implement some of this in con on containers because architecturally for us, that's a really great way of operating things. But it's actually it's answering the, the wrong question. Because right, the right question is, what's the best abstraction for the user, not how do we implement that abstraction, right? You could ask, um, should we do it on bare metal or on something like AWS or an IaaS, right? And I would answer, on an IaaS. But it doesn't matter, right? It's you should never question. care. Right. Yeah. It doesn't, it's, it's, it's the wrong question, right? You should use an IaaS. That's a better operational way of delivering the user benefit. But now let's talk about what user experience we want. And actually, we, gi we give people too much power with hey, run anything, anywhere. Um, if you go down that path, you end up being effectively a more effective IaaS. But we're trying to build a platform. And my problem is, um, uh, my problem isn't the, you know, what format it's in. Currently, I think the, the opaqueness is the big problem. With a Docker image, the yes. common complaint is, I have no idea what's in this container and put it in. Right. But still, with build packs in Cloud Foundry, you don't really know what the build pack has done. Like right. some of the, but, but even the simple build packs have like uh, ten different runtimes that they might use. If there's a vulnerability, but I need to restage. But all I think at least it makes it way pack. harder to start doing really hard to support things, right? So with a build pack, I can start shipping with all sorts of dependencies on a particular OS. That's a bad idea, right? That's something we wouldn't normally do. What containers have done is make it really cheap to do the wrong thing, right? 
um, it, I, was, I, was, I, was, I was having a conversation yesterday about this, and we were saying, um, it's kind of like if you're driving like a really big SUV, right? And what's happened is we've made gas prices much cheaper, right? But it's still probably best if we get to better transport, right? I definitely agree that uh, containers, you know, this, this, this uh, uh, metaphor with a container means that it is theoretically more portable, faster to fire up, but the things that are in there are usually so horrific you don't want to look. It, right. it means you can just <laughs> go in that container and just, just wreck havoc, and then we've right. just got lots of versions of havoc. The test pass, right. ship it. Right. Yeah. But I, I, I'm not saying that's... I think it, it should be a freedom thing for the users. There's times when the right thing to do is to ship a container, right. and there's times when the right thing to do is to ship some code. Right. Uh, but we just need to radiate out the information and about the costs of the two approaches and when each right. approach is better. Right. As you quite rightly said, when you've got an SSL vulnerability with a completely unknown container estate, right. you've got a big problem. If you can just actually change build pack and say, everything restage now, Right. You've just, got a much lesser problem. To just beating the analogy to death, right? But Keep going. Um, there, there are times when you should use bare metal, right? There are times when you actually genuinely need that level of control. You should just go use bare metal, right? But most times you should use an IaaS, right? And there are times when you really genuinely need the control that you should have a container. And that's great. But a good percentage of the time, I don't want to guess a percentage, but a good percentage of the time, it would have been better if you didn't. It would be better if you just ship code and we figured out how to make that work. And I think that's the point of Cloud Foundry. Right? I, think I think it's, it's sort of a question yeah. of where you are in terms of your operational um, pipeline. So in the front end, doing experiments, trying to you know, play with new technology, before you have codified those build packs, it'd be great to just you know, finger paint whatever you want and throw it in there and it seem, seems to work. But then as you move into a more you know, hardened, operationalized, audited system, I really want to have those layers be accounted for and have control over them. Right. Yeah. It's kind right. of like where do you build it rather than how do you build it. Right. Right. If you've got control over building outside of Cloud Foundry and it's, it's a good process and you've got CI. Well, I've, I've actually made that statement that uh, you know, sufficiently sophisticated Docker build pipeline looks suspiciously like build packs. Mm. Mm -hmm. well, yeah. right. You can use build packs to build Docker images. Well, we were just talking about this. Let's, right? let's, let's, I'll, I'll say something slightly controversial, right? Because it's supposed to be a panel, right? Um, it, I think it's the other way around, right? I, I think the problem we're having right now, the reason why we're having difficulties is what should be the case is that it's so much easier to push applications on the platform, right, on the layer above, that most of the time you'd never think of using a Docker container. But because the Docker container experience is so good and the UX is so good, people are actually finding it easier to push a Docker container than to figure out, in some cases at least, how to do a CF push. Uh, and the problem yeah. we need to fix it is to make better. it so much easier, so much quicker to get it working. My, my personal Docker opinion that is that the CF push is actually quite easy. It's oh, getting it's all the stuff easy. set up right. before exactly. The, exactly. The, the, the commitment that an individual standalone developer has on that onboarding experience to get Cloud Foundry set up by themselves, forget about it. Exactly. You're going to do it by force of will. Where Docker, app get installed, and I have a container running in minutes, exactly. that's the difference. Right. That exactly. user experience. Exactly. Two problems that's what you have to solve. The first problem is that it's difficult for users to get hold of a Cloud Foundry account and get started. And the second one is it's, it's a much bigger shift from I used to run these commands in bash to set up my stuff. And now I can just copy and paste that into a Docker file and it runs. Whereas I used to run these commands in bash to now my world is just CF push. That's just a bigger paradigm shift. Yeah. But I think we're going to see a world in which people will start doing that. They'll go to a Docker file. They'll then use it in a Docker container. I think, OK, I've got one Docker container. Now I need to add in, a, change it into a distributed system across multiple hosts. I need to add in routing and logging, various other things, all the things you need for a distributed system. And then they're going to think, I appear to have just built a really, really crap cloud foundry. Right. And but, then they'll go over to it. But what if, so I think some of this might be that we need to find some abstractions that let people do some of these things. So maybe build packs aren't quite expressive enough right now. Maybe the ways we let people do things like say, I do need this binary dependency. I do need this thing on my image, right? If instead of the way of them specifying that was to bake it once in a Docker file and ship it us, there was a way they could tell us, I do need these extra things. I have these escape hatches, but without pulling the lever the whole way out. Mm -hmm. Right. There's no reason that couldn't be part of some sort of manifest. Like, 
some of this stuff, right? Build packs were sort of designed before Docker files, right? Um, and so they're kind of shell scripts, and we do this stuff. If you actually combine some of the better ideas of Docker files with what we already have with build packs, maybe you can start to solve some of these things. Yeah, so cache, maybe actually people the lower say, layers right. would be much nicer developer experience right. than so, so just um, as a, installing Ruby again. Right? I agree. Like, like it's a very basic, ridiculous example. But let's say we have most of what a Docker file does is available to you when you push your app, but you don't get to have the from command, right? You're going to go from our rootfs. But you can have a few. You can say, I do want you to do this, this, this step, which we can cache. And there's a, there's a relatively limited set, but a few. What I'm saying is there is a halfway point between these two. We don't have to say, if your application does need something a little bit more, like a dependency, then CF push, just ship us the whole bits and we'll run it, which is we basically... Have, we have, do have limited nice. elements of that at the moment. In the Java build pack, you can... You know, specify some environment variables that will make it do subtly different things and pick your, uh, uh, you know, your runtime environment and those kind of things. So there is, there is an element of that. And also with a build pack, I also think there is some kind of fear, uncertainty, and doubt around build packs, and people think they're kind of hallowed objects. You are just running three shell scripts, and you can do equally horrific things mm -hmm. in a build pack as you can do in a Docker file. It's like no Absolutely. standards, it's just the scripts that just yeah. like, do something. So nothing stops you like calling out to a Docker file in your build pack and doing all manner of horrific things. It's just you can do nasty things in any tooling. It just seems that because the build packs are kind of there already for you, um, people aren't doing quite as bad things. So what, one thing we could do as well as build packs to kind of complement it is more stacks. Mm -hmm. So maybe you have a, a Java right. something stack, and then there's less for the build pack to do on top of that. I've, I've, I've actually thought before that if, if I were running a cloud, for, like if I was running an internal cloud for an organization, I might be tempted not to let people push their own build packs. I might say, here's your four build packs, right? Um, and then I'm going to run with those and really optimize those. Because I don't know that I want every single build that, pack. That's the design. point I was going to make in response to, to what you just said, is there's, there's this process where, yeah, you could do horrible things in build packs. Yeah, you could do horrible things in Docker. You could always do horrible things in Bash, whatever. But Putting, putting that actual build pack through its own governance cycle to move into production, that's part of this as well. So there, you're able yeah. to, to say, OK, this is what we are going to support. This is what we operationally are going to support. And it's not bring your own build pack. It's x, y, and z. Right. Yeah. Absolutely. Anyway. But that's why we have to, having that information, knowing that Cloud Foundry is taking your, your source code, combining it with a build pack, producing a droplet, and then putting that onto a file system, and knowing that those are essentially your primitives, and how do you put governance around those primitives and right. work with them? I guess an interesting question is whether or not they are sufficiently granular, and we need to break those down. Is the build pack too big? Is the layered file system, like the, the bottom layer? I mean, my impression big? right now is that they're, I think they're uh, a good size, that we could do more with it, but in some ways it's not always exposed to, to be controlled and manipulated. Like if we had a little more uh, decomposition of that pipeline, that gave you the ability to change those things, eject the droplets, use those as the artifacts, cache them, whatever, then it becomes a much more powerful system, more flexible, more usable. And, but we still didn't solve the problem that it takes you four hours to get your first Cloud Foundry set up. I've got a yes. solution. What's that? I've, I've got a solution, but after. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll <laughs> tell you. <laughs> what was the problem? Uh, well, the current workflow with, with build packs is either you take the build pack that is out there and it works for you, or it doesn't, but it almost does, and then you fork it and you tweak it, and then you've got to support that fork forever. Or you say, this, this Java build pack is far too complex for me. I just want to install this, install this, install this, and I make a simple build pack. Um, but then the other extreme. OK. Thank you. 
Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, you're supposed to be moderating. <laughs> I said Stop design. doing that. We, we could have a world where um, everyone wrote their own build pack for every application. And you'd essentially have what we have with Docker files, where everyone writes their, their own thing. The difference with Docker files is that you can uh, build on top of other people's Docker files. Um, so that would be nice if we could do that. Yeah. Yeah, that happened early in um, in the development of Docker. Someone created, took all the Heroku build packs and made uh, base Docker image from them, so you could actually. That's the other version. What if someone started with it independently? Taking the Docker file and making a build pack out of it is what he's talking about. Okay. Uh, yeah. I guess you could do that. I mean, you could write a little thing that parses it and tries to figure out. You could do that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I did actually try that once, but there's, there's generally no separation line where you can yeah, see yeah. this is a layer. It's just, it's just a big mess, and you can't easily dissect <coughs> it into layers, which is what you want to do with, with Docker. Well, it's what Docker's chosen to do, but if you're going to always run those things, then what's the point of having each one be separate? as a layer, especially when you run into all the problems of layered file systems with uh, yeah. 47 layers of this stuff. Um, we don't really need them with, um, with Cloud Foundry. Um, you essentially only need... Oh, about the layers. Um, it seems to be a different chosen layered file system depending upon which distro you're using. So if you're using Ubuntu or Red Hat, you'll get a different layered file system and then the different set of bugs they come with. Um, I've had lots of issues with AUFS and permissions <laughs> where different layers... You, you do an LS on a directory and it will say you have access to a file and then you try and access the file and you get permission denied it's because the layers have permissions, different permissions across them. Which, which, is, which is fixed in the latest version if you pass derpm1, which is some ludicrous parameter. You have, like, the, there's all these things, right? Like all these different file systems, they all have these quirks, and to try and make them work, it, it, the, it, this is a really complicated thing you're trying to kind of do on top of file systems. Um, it, My major problem is um, the bloat, because you can install the world and then delete the world, and install right. the world and delete the world in each layer, and then you've got like two copies of the world you're carrying around. It, we, and it can, be, it can be a bit worse than that. So, for example, uh, the Docker graph, right? As it builds up this graph, it has this one cache directory of all the stuff in it, and that's fine on your local machine. But if you're in a multi-tenant environment, every time someone says, I want this Docker file, you have to install it to the cache. You pull and all we need of it. to get rid of it in the cache. And there, there are no real tools to do that at the moment. Like, there's no like, Docker purge yet, as far as I know. You just have to sort of script this, and every now and again purge which ones aren't used and figure out if you can get rid of it and stuff. Yeah. It's, a, it's a very we difficult lots feature, of right? Features in it, Docker it, it, it's, it's an extremely difficult feature. Um, it, it doesn't sound like it should be, but it's really difficult because a lot of the magic of Docker, what it's doing, is caching, right? The reason you can get away with it, like, what's the difference between a Docker container and a VMDK, right, or some other VM, like, VM image? It's the fact that it's much faster, right? Like, I could package up my VM image and boot it on a VM. But a container is really fast because it's just stored the diff. Well, right? also because it doesn't it, need to boot. It, right, just, yeah. it just starts sure, the process. Sure, it's that too. Mm -hmm. um, but if you, if you get rid of the layer, then it's slow. You have to re-download the whole thing. So you actually don't want to get rid of certain layers. But how do you know which layers are the ones people are actually going to use later on? So it's actually a really hard problem to manage all these layers. I'm not, I'm not necessarily sure. This is why I really like the Cloud Foundry approach to this, saying the layered file system don't really work too well. So let's just have the OS as a layer and the app as a layer. Let's untie the app on top. And it works really well. I don't know, like, we know we've just built the app because we combined it with the build pack and made the droplet. We untie the droplet and it works well. So we don't really need to get involved. The layered file system is just an implementation detail. You want your app to start right. fast. We fork a process, right. it's the container. You want it to be portable and you want it to start fast. Yes. But it, it's, and we it's, have that. We're what, in a better situation than most other people like Docker doing containers. Like, a, a lot of the magic of cloud, I'm going to say magic and just apologize straight away, but a lot of the magic of cloud, what we're doing, is we're, give, we're using constraints, right? So we're saying you don't get all the power, and then we can do much better jobs 
um, at running our apps. It's, the con it's about contracts and promises, and if you keep your promises, I'll keep mine. Right. Yeah. And, and actually, it was to finish on time. <laughs>